You are welcome here. You are welcome here. You. Welcome to the Ventura Center for Spiritual Living. I'm Reverend Bonnie Rose. I have jet lag. I'm on India time. Bear with me. I'm going to pass the, the word over to Lonnie, our board president. Welcome back, Reverend Bonnie. Thank you. You do know you have to do a talk. Yes. I, oh. I know. I'm <laughs> okay. sorry. All right. I'll try. I'll We're going to break, it, break her in slowly. Okay. Thank you. The building is still standing. Yes, thank you. People yeah. are still in the seats. Yes, yay. <laughs> and we missed you. Yay. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so welcome in. It sounds like we're going to have a very joyous day, and it's a good way to start it with a beautiful message and music and fellowship and friendship. Yay. So thank you for coming. Thanks so much, Lonnie. Uh, let's hear from, oh, good, you're here. Thank you, <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I'm Bill Hadris with Youth and Family. You know, here we teach there is only one life and that we are all united in that one life. We call it God and many other names. We are constantly challenged to look at extremes and polarizations that are in front of us and to find in ourselves that which may seem so different than who we think we are. At times, it can be very challenging to look at situations around us and rather than point the finger at how that, it, they are wrong, look within and ask, how am I reflected in that situation? What are the similarities? How are we co-creating? It is through this knowing of oneness and unity that we lift our consciousness and remember that we are all one with God that resides in each of us. So I invite you to close your eyes for a second, take a breath, and think for a moment, how have you been responding in this world? Are there any new choices you would like to make? Are there any old choices you would like to change and create a new ripple in consciousness? I invite you to repeat after me. I am a creator of kindness. I am a creator of kindness. And so it is. And so it is. Thank, Thank you. you. So as the practitioners and ministers are standing in alignment with the truth already on our behalf, I ask each and every one to take just a moment to ground yourself in this love, in this joy in this presence of pure spirit that's within you already. So just grounding into Mother Earth and allowing your heart to blossom open with love. Knowing that the infinite presence of source energy that is the igniting factor of all of life is right at the very core of our being all the time. And knowing that this source energy surrounds us, fills us, guides us, and whispers sweet nothings into our lives. Knowing that this is God, this is love, I celebrate this moment, this day, and taking a very deep breath again with that love, knowing it is reaching beyond these doors, enfolding the entire planet with love. I say thank you, Spirit. Thank you, God. And I release this word into the law of love that always says yes. And together we say, and so it is. And so let's continue our inward focus as we breathe deeply and just rest in the presence, in the presence of one another in this beautiful community that we are forming here this morning and always, and in the presence of love, the love that permeates the very walls of this building that is grown through our commitment to love one another 
and to practice love in the world through acts of kindness. And as we listen to the words of our sacred reading, let us understand that these words were written especially for each of us. They were written hundreds of years ago, but there is a voice within us that speaks to us. And whether these words are directed at us, divine love asking us to receive it, or our own intention to spread divine love into the world, it's, it's all the same thing. It's all circulation. It's all love being love, and we get to be a part of that this morning and always. So become still, and we open our hearts and listen to the words of our sacred reading. A prayer from Shanti Deva. May I be a guard for those who need protection, a guide for those on the path, a boat, a raft, a bridge for those who wish to cross the flood. May I be a lamp in the darkness, a resting place for the weary, a healing medicine for all who are sick, a vase of plenty, a tree of miracles. And for the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening, enduring like the earth and sky until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. Amen. in celebration of the I Am Presence, the love, the light, the beauty, the power, the grace within me, within each of us. Let us breathe in deeply and then exhale, open our eyes as love and in service to what is, as it is, and so it is. Namaste. <laughs> Thank you. 
righty. So um, I mentioned when I came out, not everybody was here, um, that I just got back from India. And oddly, I got back on Wednesday, but I feel like I'm still on India time. So it's, it's you know, pretty much bedtime for me because they're 13 and a half hours. It's a, it's a different day in India, basically. So see y'all later. <laughs> No, it was a great trip, and I'll, I'll tell you more about some of the enlightening things that happened there. It was wonderful. Um, I went with my friend Nipun Mehta, who has an organization called Service Space, which is dedicated towards bringing out love and kindness in people. And it's a huge organization. I'd say close to 500,000 people involved in it. And um, he assembled humanitarian leaders from all over the, the world um, to meet near Gandhi's ashram and learn from each other. And it was, it was quite remarkable and also quite intense. So I haven't quite processed it yet, but we'll be hearing more about it. And um, the, the point is, is that we take these principles and then we ripple them out to the, the people that we, uh, you know, that we serve and influence or whatever. So, Anyway, all that aside, today's talk is called Small and Mighty Miracles. That is a picture of me holding a Brahma cow named Lakshmi. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful girl. And um, Lakme is an opera that's based on the goddess Lakshmi. So I was singing opera to her in that picture. And you see, she's not butting me with her head, so I think she liked it. <laughs> So anyway, small and mighty miracles. Now, while I was gone, yeah. Jennifer Hadras <laughs> held down the fort, and I heard she did a great job. Reverend, Reverend Jennifer, I said. So I want us to do something. We used to do it with Annette when Annette was in the office on Sundays. Jeanette, uh, Jeanette. <laughs> Jennifer is in the office. So when I say three, we're going to yell, thank you, Reverend Jennifer, okay? And we'll see if she answers. Here we go. One, two, three. Thank you, Reverend Jennifer! We're waiting. <laughs> the door shut. Dang it. <laughs> well, she's watching it online, so maybe she's bellowing at the top of her voice and we're not hearing you. We feel you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Now, Jennifer is fresh out of ministerial school and really good ministers. In the beginning of um, January, do this tradition in our denomination. They do the first four chapters of the Science of Mind textbook. So Jennifer did chapter one and chapter two. Does anybody remember what chapter one of the Science of Mind textbook is? Shut up. <laughs> well, you're close. That's chapter two. But chapter one is the thing itself. Right, which is good, but good try, good try. Um, I'll ask you when we get to chapter two. So the thing itself is, is God. And we believe that God is omnipresent, that God's not a man in a sky. As Jennifer said, it's not a man pointing at us like the Sistine Chapel saying, pull my finger, right? It's, <laughs> it's, a, um, it's just a, it's an es essence, an energy. It's a principle that, that works with us, that works with us, does not work against us at all. We work against it sometimes, but it always works with us. So that's the thing itself. The second chapter is called... The way it works, right. <laughs> Ooh, some of you copied off of Reverend Susan's paper. Okay. <laughs> the way it works. And the way that it works is that, is that uh, spirit comes into matter. Spirit creates matter out of itself using spiritual law. So spirit becomes form. Spirit becomes matter. But really, everything that we see is, is spirit incarnate, right? In the, the Gospel of John, it says, the word becomes flesh and dwells among us. That's not only speaking about one guy named Jesus, right? It's about everything. Spirit incarnate. Spirit incarnated as this universe in the Big Bang. And so we are all walking vessels of spirit. Everything is spirit. Every, everything that we call matter is actually consciousness. Consciousness disguised as matter. So that's the way that it works. I am supposed to talk about what it does. Now, I thought I just did that, okay? <laughs> it comes into form, but really, I think what it does, so the, the tack that I'm gonna take on this, or the approach I'm gonna take, is that spirit is everywhere, and therefore, there is an ever-available miracle waiting to happen in our lives, every place that we look. Even if things look difficult, even if things look desperate, even if things look challenging, even if you're packed into a sardine can of a plane with people coughing their heads off, okay, there are miracles there. There are miracles everywhere. Ernest Holmes said, we look too far away for 
reality, he said, but I'm changing it to miracles. Same thing. We look too far away for miracles. And the miracle of God's grace, of the grace of the divine, the miracle of love is all around us. But the question is, is that it is freely given unconditionally with one exception. There is one exception, and that is the exception, the condition is that we have to receive it. We have to partake of it. We have to shift our consciousness so that we are available to receive the miracle of the d divine grace, the miracle of divine love in all things, not just some things, not just the things we love or the things we like. We have to shift our consciousness to receive the miracle of divine grace in all things. Now, the only consequence of not doing that is that we don't get the miracle of divine grace. But if we do shift our consciousness and receive the miracle of divine grace in all things, then our lives expand exponentially, and we just live on, in heaven on earth all of the time. And that is a beautiful, beautiful place to be. And again, it is available for all of us. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. The miracle of heaven on earth is available for all of us. All right? So... These are some things that we say in this denomination. The miracle that you seek is seeking you. Isn't that a beautiful thought? The miracle that you're seeking, you're looking over here and that miracle's like, oh, 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 there she is, there she is. The miracle is seeking you, it's looking for you, right? Another phrase that we say often in this teaching is that there is no order of difficulty in miracles. Like one miracle isn't harder than another miracle for the divine. You know, there's a saying, don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big your God is, right? Also, small is the new big, right? <laughs> and big is the new small. In the, the way that I'm saying, the reason I'm saying that is that small and big are relative ideas. They're relative principles. It, it ha relative means that it's in relationship to something else. You know, those of you who've been going here for a, a while know the story of this time. I, 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 um, when I first moved to Santa Paula, I'm from New York originally, and I thought Santa Paula was just too tiny. There's no opera in Santa Paula. You know? <laughs> and then my husband and I rescued a goat, and she got out, and all of a sudden Santa Paula was huge. <laughs> I had no idea where to find that dang goat. <laughs> So many yards in Santa Paula, hundreds of places for a goat to graze. <laughs> we did find her, by the way, and she lived happily ever after on a goat-friendly farm. But anyway, that's what I mean by small and big being relative. It depends on the context. It depends on your position in reality, right? Ernest Holmes says we don't change reality. We change our, perception, our, our position in it, meaning that we change our perception of it. So if you're thinking that something is too big for you, maybe just say, well, maybe this is just my perception. Maybe it's really small. Maybe it's tiny for God. Or if you think that something is too small that you do, something is going to, some answered prayer is just a fragment of the prayer, you know, that it doesn't seem like it's answering enough, maybe you could change your perspective around, about that, saying this is just one step. This is not really small. This is just one step in many, in many steps that will lead me to my highest and greatest good. I think... Uh, I think last time I spoke here, way back in aught 22, <laughs> was <laughs> um, uh, I was talking about how when prayer is answered, it hardly ever comes like, oh, you know, like a, like a fanfare and a big package wrapped up and you open it up and there it is. It comes in little tiny bits and pieces. And it's so important for us to recognize the miracle as it arrives in little tiny bits and pieces. Wonderful tiny things that happen that continue to, to direct us on the path towards greater and greater love, greater and greater expression of miracles, okay? So how do we cultivate receivability? Well, one thing is to see the miracle that is, change our perception. That's what I was saying before. Just, just begin to question, like, what if this is a miracle? What if this is a miracle in disguise? What if this is a well-hidden miracle? What if this is an obvious miracle, but I can't see it? From the Course in Miracles, divine spirit, divine beloved, help me to see this differently. The other thing is to be the miracle. Live like the truth of miracles is true. We'll get into that a little bit more as, as we get farther into this talk, but... I'll give you a little spoiler alert. It's going to be do acts of kindness that helps you see the miracle, okay? What a surprise. She's going to talk about kindness. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> okay, be the miracle. Live like the truth is true. Live like the truth of oneness is true. Kindness connects all of us. And then we can always choose the option of wonder. Immense, expansive wonder. 
Is anybody here ever cynical in their lives? <laughs> really? Really? Now somebody, really? Well, somebody's raising a pinky. That's when we're shy about saying it. Yeah, yeah. Somebody in the back, I won't say who it was, but he, he looks a lot like Rick Southam. Um, <laughs> raised his hand right up to the top of the ceiling there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's easy to be cynical. It's easy to be down on life. It's easy to look at the news and say, oh my goodness, what is happening? But what if instead we were to choose the option of wonder about everything? William Blake is a mystical poet. Um, one of, he wrote many mystical poems that we've quoted all the time. One of, one of them is, is something along the lines of, we are here to learn to bear the beams of love, to receive love, right? There's a story about him when he was talking to a friend who was not mystically inclined, and uh, he asked his friend, what do you see when the sun rises up? And the guy says, well, I just see this ball of fire come up over the horizon. What do you see? And William Blake said, I see a thousand million angels singing glory to God as they come up to light the world. <sighs> Which one sounds more wonderful to you? Number one or number two? <laughs> two. Good job, Rick. Okay. <laughs> so can you see everything with wonder? Just practice that for a while. What is this? What is this? <gasps> it looks like a little heart, but... We'll talk later. It's more than that. It's much more than that. It's stitched by loving hands by hand, right? Okay, we'll get to that later on. Mm, 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 mm. What is that? It's a piano, and it's, it's, it's a miracle of little, little hammers hitting strings played by a virtuoso. <laughs> I could go on for hours, honestly. I could point to everybody in this room and talk about a miracle about you. So you can do that after the service, okay? You find someone and tell, tell them what the miracle about them is. You promise? You're going to do that? Let's do a pledge. I do solemnly swear <laughs> that I will find someone after the service and tell them what is miraculous about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see if it happens, <laughs> okay? All right, we'll see if I remember to do it, okay? <laughs> we'll have to help each other remember. Okay, so see the miracle. See the miracle. This is from one of my favorite authors and speakers, Rupert Spira. The world is not what we see, it is the way we see. What the dickens? <laughs> the world is not what we see, it is the way we see. You may have heard me quote the Talmud before that says, things are not as, oh, no, I can't remember it. Things are not the way we see. We see things the way, we don't see things the way they are. We see things the way we are, right? The world is not what we see. It is the way we see. A filter of finite belief covers infinite being. Infinite being is changeless. As we change, what previously concealed God's being now reveals God's being. Are you willing to change, to reveal God's being in everything? Are you willing to see the divine in everything? Are you willing to see all of the miracles unfolding in your life? Say yes. yes. Okay, good job. Okay, good. <laughs> all right. All right. So, speaking of miracles, can you see God's miracle here? Beautiful children in India that greeted us, these People from all over the world that came to the Gandhi Ashram greeted us with such love and such kindness and were so excited to see us. They went out of their way to make sure that everything, all of our needs were taken care of. It was at times a little bit like that old story of the Boy Scouts where the Boy Scout <laughs> say we get a merit badge for helping an old lady across the street. And the scout leader says, why does it take two of you? And the Boy Scout said, because she didn't want to go. <laughs> it was a little bit like that at times. Like, no, no, I can carry my own purse, really. <laughs> but it was so well-intended and so sweet. That was God's miracle in action all around the, side of the other side of the world, right? Can you see the miracle here? 
So many miracles there. This was on Facebook. Some of you may or may not have seen it. But one of the reasons I went this time, I'm, this is my second time doing this excursion, was because of the woman that I'm sitting next to, the, the African-American woman, uh, Wakanyi is her name. She's from Kenya, and I've known her online for ages. And I remember one time coming to church, and we were standing in the circle that we stand in before we, we pray for the morning service. And I was like, guess what happened to me yesterday? And they were like, what? You know, thinking maybe I'd won the lotto or something. I heard the Lord's prayer in Swahili. Because <laughs> she speaks Swahili. And, and when I saw her name on the list, I'm, I was on the fence. But she was the, she was the tipping point because I just love her so much. And all of those beautiful children again helping us, sitting on us, <laughs> hugging us, loving us. The man standing behind with the, the kind of multicolored thing on his, on his um, shoulder. He is the grandson of a slave. And now he is a renowned professor and teaching in uh, a university in the East Coast and a great student of Baha'i, the faith, the Baha'i faith. Person, you can't really see him, and I'm not really going to necessarily point him out, but he was kidnapped during a meditation retreat. How about that? He was kidnapped, abducted during a meditation retreat, and he got out. <laughs> So many stories about everybody in that picture, so many miracles, but we don't know it just at face value. So we start asking questions and we start, start finding the miracles in, in the, the beautiful beings around us. Now this one, yes, there is a miracle in this, and it, it is happy children. They were happy in that particular moment, but it's in the slums. It's in the slums of India. This was taken the last time I was there. I didn't, didn't go into the slums that much this time, but there was... Um, uh, so there's a big pile of garbage and trash behind them, and we met some of the people that would, in the, in the past, be considered untouchables because they go through the, the trash and they, they take out things that they can possibly use. They're rag pickers. And, and yet, there's a miracle in that because in, in the slums in this particular province, there was a lot of alcoholism and a lot of abuse. And service space, the people that were involved in um, the, the place where I went, the India branch of that organization decided that rather than fight the alcoholism and the abuse, they would do what Gandhi called ahimsa, which we'll talk about next week, ahimsa, which is creative nonviolence. And so their solution for that was to give women empowerment. And that's why I said these heart pins are miracles. They started collecting fabric. And the women of India started creating these heart pins, which they, they send all over the world. They, they give form to the formless. They create these heart pins by hand, and they send them all over the world. And they are engaged in profitable employment so that they have an income, so that they can take care of their family's needs in case their husbands are you know, having issues with alcohol or what have you. And, and these, these things, they, they ripple. They, they bring love to so many people. And the story of how they were started by these women in poverty, in the appearance of poverty in Ahmedabad, that is a miracle in itself. So they began to be the miracle, and they gave the miracle form in these simple little heart pins. And by the way, they are, they look easy to make, but they're not as easy to make as you might think. <laughs> Anybody remember when we tried making them here? Yeah, yeah. We had some other... You know, we tried to make heart pins. Um, some of them looked like other body parts, like <laughs> I think we had a kidney or two and maybe a pancreas and a liver and <laughs> a spleen, you know, whatever. But anyway, that's, so that's part of making the miracle form, like taking, taking what you've been given, being in service to what is and loving it up, loving it up so that it becomes a miracle. It already is a miracle, but loving it up so that we reveal the miracle that is embedded within it. So is there something in your life where you can do that? Is there something in your life that feels troublesome? And just with a little, a little poetic inquiry and a little understanding and a little trust and a little knowing that it may not necessarily be what you are seeing, it may be how you are seeing it, changing your vision just a little bit. Is there something that can expand within you to find the, bring, bring the form out of the formless and find that miracle that is embedded within this particular situation? I believe that each one of us here has that capacity. Each one of us can do that. Each one of us can begin to be the miracle that we wish to see in the world and give the accoutrements of our life form in a miraculous way. Those heart pins rippled here. 
That's our logo. I don't know if when I was waiting for my slides, you noticed that there was a um, uh, hands going down like this uh, on our on our be love, share love, serve love logo. They rippled over here. We made our logo like that. When I was uh, in India, Nip Nipun, the, the leader of this organization, kept telling people that heart pins were our logo. We had a big discussion because we were wondering whether or not we should have them like the hands like this, like offering them to God, or putting them like this, offering them to the world. Folks in India said we made the right choice, people. <laughs> Offering the hearts to the world. Heard it in India? Must be true. I don't know. <laughs> so they, they rippled it back to us. Then when I went, I asked a bunch of people, I asked the congregation to bring me fabric so that I could bring some more fabric back to the heart pin sewers. <sighs> oh. That's not really my suitcase because there's flippers and a snorkel in there. Had no need of that while I was in India. But it was similar. I could hardly bring any clothes because I had so much fabric. I had to keep wearing the same outfit over and over again. <laughs> People were so generous with their fabric. And, and, and while I was there, while I was visiting the place where they make the heart pins, I gave the fabric to the heart pin ladies, and they were so, so happy to receive it. In fact, one of them made a heart pin on the spot and gave it to, to me. I think Karen Collins donated that, fl that fabric. So, <laughs> so if I can find, I have it somewhere. I think it's in my office. I'm going to give you that heart pin if I can find it. Okay. <laughs> but they were just so excited to have it. And then, and then they said, you know, before you leave, before you go back to the States, we're going to give you a bunch of heart pins. And I was like, no, no, that's not the point. We're, we want these heart pins to ripple all over the world. And they're like, yeah, we hear you. However, we're still going <laughs> to... We're still going to give you a bunch of heart pins. And that's the thing. This is, a, this is a metaphor for God. Have you ever heard the saying, you can't outgive God? You cannot outgive the service pin, the, service pin uh, the, uh, the heart pin ladies, because the service based people, because the, you give something to them, they give something back to you. Then you want to give something to them, and they give something back to you. And that's what a reciprocal relationship of giving and receiving is. And as the more that we do that, the more giving and receiving becomes one, right? I mean, when we collected the fabric and gave it to the heart pin people, it didn't feel like we were making a sacrifice. It felt like we were receiving something by doing that giving. And then, lo and behold, we started receiving all these heart pins. We're like, no, no, we don't want that. But then it felt good to receive it. And now, guess what I'm going to ask you to do? After the service, I'm going to ask you to come up here, take a heart pin for yourself, take a heart pin for a friend, take these little cards that say where they were made and, and ripple the love of the heart pins all over Ventura. They can all go. You can take any of them. And we also have these bracelets that say, me. You may not be able to see it. And then we. Ooh. <laughs> because we are moving from a me to a we consciousness, right? Okay. So that's some rippling for you to do. Make the word flesh. Bring it into form. Bring that kindness into your life. Give somebody a heart pin who needs it. Sometimes I'll leave, it, uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave a tip for somebody, but I'll also put a heart pin there, too, just for fun. <laughs> this is a picture of my baristas at Starbucks. <laughs> One of them is wearing a heart pin. And then it ripples into other acts of service. This is a picture of our center when, when uh, Temple Beth Torah had a hate message uh, scribbled on their sign, and we went over there with large paper hearts. We cut out paper hearts, and we stood there, and we took a picture just to say, we love our Jewish brothers and sisters, and also that only love can drive out hatred, to paraphrase Martin Luther King. Another example, another example of how we have rippled in the center, how we are doing ongoing small and mighty miracles. I'm going to ask Brian to show the video that we have. This video, before you show it, was oh see there's our there's our logo this video was created by Mary Kerrigan who is the program director at a, at Step Up Ventura which is a daycare center for children who are impacted by homelessness and uh, I forgot to give credit to the um, musician it's Kathy Zaveda singing a song called Love Serve and Remember which is based on the teachings of Ramdas Ramdas when he was in India studying with his guru Neem Karuli Baba when he left India he said how am I going to bring this information back to the United States and Neem Karuli Baba said three words love serve and remember so hopefully it won't get kicked off Facebook and you can go ahead and start it now if you like
It's going to take just a minute to fire up there. You know, normally at this time of the year, usually I speak the Sunday after, at the beginning of the, the January, where we're making plans for a new year. And I just ask all of you, whether it's in your personal life or as part of this church community, part of this, this spiritual community, just imagine what miracles we can create together. You know, that, that was just a tiny sampling of both the miracles that I experienced in India, but also the miracles that we create as a church community, the, the good that we do in the community, and the way in which we support each other. Because that um, video was a beautiful demonstration of, of giving of ourselves to folks that don't necessarily attend the center, but so much of that also involved all of us supporting and giving to one another. So just think about that. You know, we're starting to plan the next year, and if you have any thoughts about that, I would love to know about it, because I think we can do miraculous things. I think we can do wonderful and mighty things, and that we are that living spirit, that divine power and presence of the divine, of, of God, that, that longs to express in miraculous ways through each and every one of us individually, but also collectively. So what will we do with all of this love? I don't know, but I'm excited to find out. <laughs> How is this about me? Not me, but about you. <laughs> uh, we can choose to see life as a miracle. Choose to see life as a miracle in all things because it is. Live like life is a miracle. It means a lot of appreciation, a lot of grace, a lot of understanding. And treat others like they are miracles. Remember the pledge that we took here <laughs> is to just recognize that's something miraculous about somebody. You know, I, I had a, a very small incident that happened when I was away, and it's funny because I, it, it's, not, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing, but I, I just keep thinking about it, and when we were doing a, a circle for the people that were volunteering, it's like, this is kind of ridiculously small, but it meant a lot to me. When we were um, gathering in a last circle, we were all kind of, you know, hugging and you know how we do. We hug and we hold hands and we sway and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> um, and uh, I was standing next to a Buddhist monk. And my, my training is such that you don't really go around grabbing Buddhist monks. Anybody? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, 
if, if you're inclined to do so, they don't really like that, okay? So the Buddhist monk was here, and I was here, and I was just being very, you know, the circle was broken, but I was also feeling that I wanted to respect this Buddhist monk, particularly being a woman. I didn't want to, you know, hold his hand or put my arm around his waist or anything. And this one gentleman, this, uh, I think he was like a venture capitalist from Austria, just, he was standing next to the monk on the other side. He just glanced over, saw what was happening, and he just came around and put his arm around the monk and then put his arm around me. And it was so simple. It was such a simple gesture, but he read the room and he, he just took a simple gesture of kindness. And, and afterwards, I, I pointed it out to him because I wasn't sure if that's why he did it. But I said, did you, did you do that because it would be inappropriate for me to, to you know, hold a monk like that? And, and he just nodded and he said, yeah. And I was like, that was extremely kind of you. So that's telling someone that, that they're a miracle. And I point that out just because it can be as simple as that. Just noticing an act of kindness that somebody is doing. Notice how the, the cashier checker smiles at, at the people that she's serving. Notice how the people that are working on the road, you know, the, the guys that, that um, put up the stop sign and then, you know, the, then they wave you on. You know, that's got to be a boring job. Notice that they're doing, doing us a service. You know, anybody, anybody, or the people in your life, just how they are a miracle. You don't have to go up to them and fling yourself on them and say, you're a miracle. <laughs> it's just, just gentle, gentle approaches. They'll be like, where do you, where did you, what church do you go to? <laughs> oh, okay, I understand now, okay. <laughs> hmm. And then grab a heart pin to share after the service. <laughs> I'm gonna, I, ended, I started with Lakshmi the cow, and I'm going to end with Lakshmi the cow. You know, both times I've been in India, I've asked them, why are cows sacred? Why are cows sacred in India, in the Hindu tradition? And there's lots of reasons. You know, there's Krishna with a cow. And, and uh, if you are driving in the street in India, first of all, that is a whole experience. But part of the reason it's an experience is that there's cows all over the place. Like, and if a cow just decides to cross the street, everybody stops and lets the cow go, right? But this time when I asked, one of, them, one of the gentlemen that I asked, who, who knows a lot about spirituality and whatnot, he said, when you look into a cow's eyes, you see the compassion of the world looking back at you. And that's what I felt about Lakshmi, the cow. But you know what? I think we can see that in, in the humans, too, <laughs> in the humans around us. We look for the hidden compassion that's in humans, or we express compassion through our eyes to other humans. And the other thing about cows, the other thing I learned is that they offer their milk freely. That's a, that's a picture. They offered us uh, Lakshmi's milk, and I don't usually drink milk, but it was from Lakshmi, so I had to say yes, you know, so <laughs> they offer their milk freely, and they feed the world, and I think that's what, what we do, too. You know, we, we receive sustenance, certainly from the universe, but then, so it doesn't stagnate. You know, a cow will get sick if it, if it doesn't release its milk, so that it doesn't stagnate. We offer it freely to the world, and then it circulates back to us, kind of like I was describing with the heart pins. It circulates, we give and receive, we give and receive, and ultimately we get to the place where giving and receiving are one. And so I hope I've given you something to work with this week. If you do anything, just go ahead and take a heart pin and share it with somebody and just maybe give a kind word with it as well. And just see what happens. See how that makes you feel. See what, what the ripple feels like. See if there are any ripples. Just without expectation, give away a part of yourself and see how it actually blesses you as well as it blesses the other person. And so in closing, I'll ask us to read together this from the sacred reading that Hugh did. We'll read it together, and here we go. For the boundless multitudes of living beings, may I bring sustenance and awakening enduring like the earth and sky until all beings are freed from sorrow and all are awakened. And please repeat after me. I am a miracle. I, am a miracle. I, celebrate, that I celebrate that you are a miracle. And so it is. So it is. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. <laughs> Let us pray. <clears throat> And so we turn within and just bless this time together. Just trust and know that Spirit has moved through us with such grace and such understanding that truly we remember that there is one life and that life is God's life. That life is our life right here and right now. And that life pours itself into us. And to receive it, we pour it out of ourselves. 
how beautiful it is to be part of this reciprocity of giving and receiving, this endless flow of beauty and grace and kindness and love that fills us, that fills us so that we are overflowing with it. That we give and receive with such freedom and such grace and that we become the grace and the goodness and the love that we wish to see in the world. We become that which we already are. And so I anchor in that beingness today. I anchor in that, in that deepening of consciousness and that deepening of awareness of the truth of existence. And I, I speak my word for everybody here today when I recognize that transformation is occurring within each of us as we share this time together, as we each lend our consciousness to this spiritual soup that we create together in this beautiful sanctuary. I am so grateful for everyone that said yes to showing up today, to everyone that decided to participate in this message to not only bless our lives individually, but to bless our lives collectively and to bless the entire world through our blessedness. And so I am grateful. Grateful for the changes that I know that are happening. Grateful for the evolution of consciousness. Grateful for the beauty of the world and the miracle that is already upon us. I bless all spiritual teachings, all paths to God. Churches, temples, synagogues, mosques, ashrams, gurdwaras, fundamentalists, atheists, agnostics, all beings everywhere, for everyone is a blessing. Everyone is part of the greater picture of love. And with a heart that is so filled with blessedness, I say thank you, Spirit, thank you, love, and I release these words into the divine mystery, and together we say, and so it is. <clears throat> Thank you, Bonnie. My it's pleasure. a beautiful message. Thank you. Um, you know, and it's such an honor to do the offering. Um, and part of that is because it's very easy these days to feel isolated and alone and not part of something. And yet, you being here is a blessing. And our offering is a gift that truly does ripple out. And I'm going to give a little plug to our annual meeting that's coming up. Oh. Okay. Because that is a beautiful way to know, like, truly what your gifts do and bless in the world. Because part of the offering, we tithe on that, and we have definitely tithed to service space yes, because they bless us immensely. And so that's a huge ripple mm -hmm. from a little ripple. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, your offering is a huge ripple. And in that gratitude, I invite you to place your offering over your heart and repeat after me. We trust in spirit. We trust in spirit. Love is the giver and receiver of all that we are. Love is the giver and receiver of all that we are. We offer this gift. We offer this gift. It is an outer expression of our inner abundance and compassion. It is an outer expression of our inner abundance and compassion. Our gifts bless many. Our gifts bless many. And return to us multiplied in miraculous ways. And return to us multiplied in miraculous ways. So that we may give again. So that we may give again. And so it is. And so it is. Stay.
tapper. Yeah. Okay, I just have a few announcements and then we will uh, go have snacks. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. So if, if you'd like to dedicate flowers, there's a small fee for that. You get to keep the flowers or give them to the person you're dedicating them to. You would see uh, Annette or Jennifer in the office about that. We have ambassadors here to assist anybody who's new. Our ambassador, what our ambassadors like to stand up today? There's Kim and there's Pam. Yeah, so if, you've, if you're new and you've got questions about the church, the center, you can talk with one of them, or, or really anybody, but they're, they're the experts, so. Okay, ElderQuest is a wonderful class. It's six weeks, and it's, it started on the January 17th in person, and Thursdays on January 19th on Zoom, and you can still join if you like, and it's a, it's a really beautiful class about, about finding your place as you evolve into that, that period of life. It's taught by a wonderful teacher, Linda Drevenstedt, who is an expert on the topic, and I just encourage you, if you haven't signed up for it, there's still time to get in. Uh, Blood Drive, we partner with the Red Cross, and that's happening on February 1st, and uh, we need to have you s sign up for that first before you show up. I'm teaching a class starting in February, early February. It's called The Hidden Gospel Part 2, and it's... Um, <laughs> see Karen clapping there. It's, um, it's based on the teachings of Jesus, but not the Jesus you learned in Sunday school, okay? It's a different kind of Jesus, and you don't have to have taken part one. This, um, this period of, of uh, classes is about the uh, parables, so go ahead and sign up for that if you're interested in reinterpreting what you may have learned as a, as a child, and uh, again, anchoring into more of the of the wholeness of who you really are and what was really the message of the Christ, which was really about inclusivity and our oneness with God. Soul Collage, also taught by Linda Drevenstedt, plus a colleague, Tree... Williams. Tree Wynn? Williams. Williams, Tree Williams. That's happening on February 18th, 1 to 3, and it's an intuitive process for self-discovery and community. There's a $45 materials fee, and then if you want to make an additional donation, that's cool too. That's, again, another wonderful class taught by expert teachers that is heart-opening and life-changing. Our annual meeting is February 19th. That's where you find out all the scoop about what's happened last year. More about that later. Um, outreach opportunities are listed on our website. There's family to family serving lunch to homeless folks, and also we participate in helping rehome homeless people in Lift Up Your Voice. Choir rehearsal for Hearts and Harmony that takes place virtual via Zoom and also Sundays, 11.30 to 12.30. Everyone is welcome. Join the choir if you love to sing, it's super fun. And then after service, we've got hospitality through that door and through that door. There's a bookstore there. There's, um, there's uh, T-shirts, a few items for sale, a few items for giveaway. I am giving away a shirt that says, what would Gandhi do? And Gandhi is spelled wrong. <laughs> Somebody from another country brought it and spelled Gandhi wrong on 75 shirts, so I got one, and I just thought it would be fun. <laughs> Somebody wanted to wear it. It's whoever gets it, more power to you. There you go. Um, there's also an encouragement statement where you can color this tablecloth and say kind things to each other. Remember, you're going you're gonna to tell everybody, or at least one person, how they're a miracle in your life, okay? And then uh, those at home, please share the live stream. We're on Twitter, and if you could review us on Yelp, uh, that would be a great thing. Remember to take a heart pin. And last but not least, we have these fantastic practitioners that are wearing white stoles. And if you want to come down front and get a prayer about some personal matter or something that you're celebrating or a challenge or whatever, our practitioners are just ultimately divinely skilled at offering prayer, and you will feel better immediately. So come on down if you'd like to, and I think that's all I got for now. So let's go ahead and we'll do a prayer and send you on your way. Mm. Okay, so I just turn within and just trust that divine love has guided this service, has brought us all together by divine appointment so that we can celebrate the miracle of life and the miracle of being and the miracle of ourselves individually and collectively, the miracle of the cosmos showing up as each of us. And so again, I trust that this time has been transformational and good and that we each go our separate ways, a little lighter in the heart, a little more loving towards ourselves and towards others and filled with the glory of the divine, ready to share it 
in beautiful, mystical, miraculous ways, ready to circulate. And so I give thanks for this time together. I bless it with love and gratitude. And with a heart so filled with thanksgiving, I say, thank you, spirit. Thank you, love. And I release these words into the divine mystery. And together we say, and so it is. Namaste.